Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Rebel Moon Part 2, The Scar Giver. Right, hotly, hotly anticipated movie of this year. I'm only joking. Just to give you a bit of a lowdown on my thoughts on the previous movie, I was more forgiving on that film than what seemed like the majority. I found it to be a pretty decent, different take on the Star Wars sort of formula. Um, I know it's going for this R-rated sort of Star Wars homage, should we say, or other people might say rip-off, which is also fair enough. Look, I, I enjoyed it for what it was. My biggest issue with that first one was the characters. There was no one to really sink my teeth into. Um, that really doesn't change for this new one. But as far as that first movie goes, I thought it had some good world-building aspects to it. Um, visually, I thought it looked pretty sick. Um, I normally think Zack Snyder's films look pretty good, to be fair. Um, I am in the, the... not. I would not call myself a Snyder bro at all. I was not champion for that director's Justice League cut as much as what other people were. Um, but I'm glad we got it in the end. But yeah, Scargiver. Folks, this film is truly horrendous. You know, I was fully prepared to give Trash a chance, but I did it once with the first part and I can't do it again with the second part. Um, Not for me, this film. If you're into agriculture and you like sowing crops, this film might be for you. Because I tell you what, we don't just get one montage of some sick farming going on. We get two montages of people in slow-mo cutting down grains of wheat. I mean, this isn't sort of what I was expecting when we were going into part two. I honestly thought, given it be Snyder, we've had plenty of setup in that first one. I thought this one was just going to be an all-out action space epic. That is definitely not what it is, so don't go in thinking it's going to be that. It's basically got two acts. First act is training montages along with getting some grain sold from the crops um i think that's the technical term it, it's funny the, the thing is guys i actually work in agriculture that's my day job I, I i produce animal feed so like i deal with a lot of grains on a day-to-day -day basis i didn't want to be coming home on saturday morning after my 10 or 6 shift and watching Zack snyder do his best farming movie for 45 minutes yeah first 45 minutes is like truly dreadful it's a hard one to get through uh, you'll have seen the reviews out there saying they do take like a sort of a, a 20 minute sequence to go through everyone's backstory about why they might be relevant um but they're not relevant the characters here are just so one-dimensional there's not much growth from the first movie and in fairness they, they hadn't really have known each other that long in the first movie so when you get to this second movie and they're all like you know i, I will die for you and stuff like that. it's just like i don't believe it but um yeah folks this ain't a good one this ain't one of zach's best by by a long run i would actually maybe put this as zach snyder's worst film we've had thus far and Look, the, the idea of this sort of R-rated Star Wars is something that I'm still willing to take a chance on, but I don't think he's he's the guy for it, unfortunately. He's just been given too much money to do whatever he wants when it comes to these these uh, movies, these Rebel Moon movies. And it, if, if I'm being honest, like I, I feel like Zack needs a bit of studio input um just to rein him in a little bit the fact that this movie is going to be coming out again in a couple of months but extended with an extra hour i think it is um that's for both films as well by the way so part one's getting an extra hour added onto it as as well as the the part two and they're both going to be r-rated but as far as i i can tell from certain interviews that zach's done it's just more violence and more sex mm, i don't think that's enough to make these films better unfortunately Sophie Batella is really good in the right role. I thought she was good in Kingsman. She was okay in Atomic Blonde. But I'm sure she's a lovely person, but I just don't think she can lead a film just yet. It'd have been nice if there was a decent writer on board for both of these films. So she would have been able to maybe have something to play with. We could have really like honed in on if, if Sophia Batella is a 
good actress or not. Um, like, don't get me wrong, folks. The the action scenes, yeah, she nails. She looks convincing. Like, I believe it. But if we are talking about action scenes, one thing I thought I was going to come away with really enjoying about this film, and it is subpar. Action's okay. Like, you know what I'm going to say. Slow-mo Snyder, whew, strikes again. But he, he went extra hard with the slow-mo in this one. The, the slow-mo and farming montages at the start really sort of just killed the film entirely for me i'm not gonna lie there wasn't enough in the back end to uh to make up for anything endurable about that first half yeah this ends with the promise of a couple of more movies coming our way and i just don't think we need them i think it might be time to move on zach it's disappointing because i wouldn't say this is original but on a visual standpoint and with it being a bit more harder edged this is something that I would love normally. Take another science fiction franchise, maybe more in line with this one, something more like, I don't know, Riddick. So the Chronicles of Riddick, uh, Pitch Black and Riddick third movie. I love that franchise. And one of the main reasons I love it, because they're not necessarily amazing films, but they have got a sick protagonist in Vin Diesel's Riddick. He is someone who I'm invested in. I'm listening to every word they say because they don't actually say a lot, but he's super charismatic in that role. And Cora, I think it is, who is the lead in this film, just doesn't have that sort of same energy. I would have gave this film more of a pass if there was a character that I could truly be invested in. thing about the movie, the villain, Ed Skirin, I think it is, who plays like the, the Emerald villain who comes back from the dead from the first film. You know, he's so over the top. The charisma's there with him. He sort of plays that atypical villain pretty well. Production is one aspect I do enjoy. So all the designs of the ships, the uh, lightsabers, sorry, swords that just glow orange and blue, but total rip-off. I've seen a lot of people taking the piss out of the fact that they use coal and stuff like that. I actually didn't mind that sort of element to it. it gave me sort of steampunk vibes. Why not, Zach? So one of the worst aspects about this film for me is the location. I think it's just a bit boring. Can't lie. Um, a problem with it is that we're in space... We're in the future is what it seems. And all we can do is be in this shitty little farm. Like, it's so boring. The, all the settings that the film was teasing and montaging through flashbacks and backstories all looked way more interesting than where we actually ended up being here. Now, I'm sure Zack Snyder's got 55 more of these Rebel Moon films planned on the, on the, on the board, but just as far as where these first two parts are set, pretty boring, didn't like it. I don't mind the stuff on the ship. You know, in that third act, when we get the big showdown and the ship's on like a vertical slant, I didn't mind all that. But unfortunately, when you're not invested in any characters, it all becomes a bit boring and a bit subpar, unfortunately. Guys, I can't recommend this this one at all. If I'm going to rate it, so I gave the first one, get ready for this, three stars out of five. Now, I think that's being very generous. I'm not going to be as generous here at all. I'll probably just give this one two stars out of five, and that might even be generous. So my two stars out of five equates to a four out of ten. I'm probably never going to watch this film again. So that four out of ten might actually be a three out of ten. But I do like Zach and I am rooting for him. So hopefully Zach can get on board and get partnered up with a good writer and produce something. Maybe he's not as ambitious as his last ten years worth of work. Um, something like Army of the Dead. Pretty cool. Filmed absolutely horrifically, the, the cinematography choices with that terrible, um, all the up, up close shots in that film, I, I just found it really jarring. Like, and I like the premise, so that was a bit of a disappointing one. That one, but yeah, can't recommend it, guys. Watch anything else out this week, but Rebel.